Good morning. Good morning. Please stand as you are able to in body or in spirit as, as we go to court worship. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Yesu amefufuka. Kweli amefufuka. Alleluia. Jésus est ressuscité. Il est bien ressuscité. Alléluia. seated. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. 
Now we're going to try it in French. Joyeuse Pâques. Joyeuse Pâques. And now in Kiswahili, Pasaka in Jema. Pasaka in Jema. It is so good to have all of you with us today, whether you're here in person or online. I'm Pastor Lisa, and on behalf of Pastors John and Donna, we are delighted to have you in our midst as we celebrate the risen Christ this morning. As we gather, we have a few things to remind you of today, um, and that is that there is no discipleship hour today, but we will have communion in the chapel, which is just adjacent to this space at 1030, and we'd love to have you grab some refreshments in the and join us for that sacred time in the chapel following this service. Our discipleship hour will resume next Sunday, the 7th, with our children and youth classes uh, meeting at their regular times and spaces. Um, and then we also will have our Wesley Conventicle that's meeting next week. And we will, for uh, another option for an adult class, is called the Wired Word, which looks at stories in the news alongside scripture and how they might apply to our lives. And we'd love to have you uh, join us and um, be part of that special time together. Um, and now I have a special announcement from Pastor John about our winter weather or inclement weather shelter. Pastor John. Well, you all know that we committed ourselves that whenever the weather goes south, that we are going to make sure that we, those people who are unhoused, we are going to be able to offer them somewhere to stay for the night. So between us and First Christian Church up here, we are collaborating. First Christian Church has done that twice, and now it's our turn. So we wanted to do it tonight, but it was too soon. But tomorrow the weather is predicted to be really bad. So if you had volunteered yourself for, uh, to be one of the volunteers, you are required to talk to me after the service so that we can be able to sign you up, so that we can be able to offer uh, a place for people to sleep to no tomorrow when the weather is going to be, uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be really bad. It's going to be held here for the first time. I know we will have four starts in some of the things, but we want to make sure that we do it and then we can be able to become better as we offer accommodation. And this is a test for us because we say Christ is risen and other people are outside and some of them will have really bad weather. So if you can be able to uh, come and do that, uh, shift start, there is different shifts, one hour, one hour, those who are late night sleepers at 2 a.m., that's a good shift for you to come in, right? Uh, those others that won't hurry, there are those shifts. So the shifts are just one or two hours. You don't have to be there for the whole night, but you can be able to be of a lot of help. The last time we had people, we had about 20 people, and we turned away five other people because we could not accommodate. So please, you're welcome to, to sign up and, and join in that ministry as well. Thank you. We also have a new member class that is coming up uh, the next few Sundays, and we need to know by tomorrow if you'd like to participate in that. And please contact Mariah. Her email is on this slide. Uh, we're excited that we're going to have special music from our chancel choir um, uh, with a, 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 an opportunity to share in Call to Love on April 28th at the 930 service. And we want you to mark your calendars now so that you can be sure to be here and to be part of that special musical celebration in Eastertide. And um, finally, we are super excited about our Vacation Bible School this summer, and the signups went live this week. You can use that QR code that is on the screen. Please sign up so that we know that you'd like to attend. It's going to be a Splish Splash BBS from June 17th to the 19th, looking at stories um, about water in the Bible, and we'd love to have you um, and your young people be part of that. So please scan that and let us know that you'd like to attend. Now I'd invite you to take a deep breath to breathe in the hope and peace and love of the risen Christ. And as you exhale, to let go of the pain and suffering in your life and the world around you so that you can be fully present with the God of love today. The Lord be with you. I'd like to invite everyone who's young and young at heart, come on up with Mr. Matt. We're so glad to have you here this morning.
Well, welcome everyone. It is so good to see you all here today. I'm so glad you were able to join us on Easter Sunday. And to get us started today, I had a question for you. I was wondering if anybody had any nicknames that their friends called them. Does anybody have any nicknames or a name that somebody uses for you that's not your, your birth name or your given name? I saw Rosie's hand first. Rosalita, and that's not your actual name, right? No, uh-huh, so there you go, so there's one, yep. Okay, so you're Evie, not Evelyn, yep, to a lot of friends, yep. Same, yep, uh-huh, we've got a couple Evies up here. Call you Rachie yeah. if you allow them to. Yeah. So you gotta be like, so you got to be like in the inner circle, top five, right? That kind of thing. Okay, cool. Um, when I was growing up, when I was in high school, there were a lot of mats. All right, it's a very popular name. So I was just Upshaw. And then when I got to college, because of how emails work, I was Mupshaw. Um, and it stuck, right? So, but my grandma always called me Matthew, which is my full given name, right? I was always Matthew or Mr. Matthew. My great aunt still calls me that. So there's, there's names, right, that when people know you, they call you a certain name as kind of a way of, of showing, like, I'm your friend, we know each other, or we love each other, right? So keep that in mind as we think about today's Bible story, because today's Bible story is about Easter and about when Jesus came back to life, See, on the very first Easter, on that very first Sunday, Jesus came back to life, but nobody knew it was going to happen, even though he'd been telling people. And so Mary went to the tomb one day where, Jesus, where she thought Jesus' body was, and she was going to take care of the body. And so what she was going to do, she was going to go, and she had some spices and perfumes, and she was going to make it smell nice. And so she went, but when she got there, at the tomb, the big rock that was kind of like the door to the tomb had been rolled away. So that was her first clue that something was up. But she was worried. She didn't immediately think that, oh, no, oh wow, Jesus is alive. She thought, oh, no, somebody stole Jesus' body. So she was very upset because when she got to the tomb and she went in, there was no body. Jesus was gone. And so she was very, very upset. And so she was upset when she heard somebody ask her why she was crying. And she assumed it was the gardener who took care of things around the tomb. And she said, please, if you know where his body is or if you moved his body, just let me know. Just tell me where it is. And then who she thought was the gardener said, Mary, said her name. And that's when she realized it wasn't the gardener. It was Jesus, and that Jesus was still alive. He came back from the dead, and so he was risen, right? Which is why we've, we've, you've heard it a few times already, right? He is risen, and we say he is risen indeed. Alleluia, right? And so this is the story of the first Easter, and Mary was so excited and so happy. She had been so upset just a moment before, but now she was so happy she had to run and tell people about it. So she went and she told the disciples, and the disciples didn't believe her at first either until Jesus appeared to them. But it's in that moment where Jesus says her name that she realizes who Jesus is. And so if there's just only a couple things you remember from today's church service, I hope, well, number one, because it's Easter, I hope you remember that Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. But also that Jesus knows your name too. Jesus knows you, Jesus loves you, and Jesus knows your name too. So as you hear the Bible story read here in a few minutes, imagine what it would be like to not hear Jesus say, Mary, but Jesus to say your name. And maybe not just even your given name, but maybe a nickname that only your friends call you. And, and let that be a reminder that Jesus knows you and Jesus loves you. And we here at this church, we love you too. And we together can always gather together and remind each other that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. All right? So we're going to close with a word of prayer. I'll, I'll pray and you can repeat after me. But what do we like to do when we pray? What do I like to do? Crisscross applesauce, right? Yeah. So if we can sit crisscross applesauce. I, I call this my prayer posture, right? I like to put my hands together in front of my heart. It just helps my body to be still and quiet while I pray. Helps it to make it a little easier to focus, okay? And then I bow my head, and I'll pray, and you can repeat after me, okay? 
Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to show us how to live. And thank you for your love and for the love of everyone in this room. May we remind each other that you are risen indeed and that each person here is a blessing. Amen. Now, before we go, I just want to remind everybody. So our nursery friends, for those that are five and younger, are going to head down to the nursery. And because we don't have discipleship hour, they're going to come back up at the end of service during the last hymn. So just so you know that while some of our, our younger friends might go to the nursery, they will be back at the end of the service, okay, when the final hymn starts. So we'll all be able to finish the service together with that final song. But the rest of us will find our seats with our grown-ups. And on the way, make sure you tell those around you, you are a blessing. Please join me for the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. O risen Christ, open us to the power of your resurrection. As we hear it proclaimed anew this day, that we too might rise to new life in you. Amen. Please stand as you are able for a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels standing in white, saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, 
Why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he said, had said these things to her. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, and for the word of God among us, thanks be to God. As we celebrate this sacred moment on Easter, I am deeply thankful for um, some thoughts and reflections from Episcopal Bishop Sam Rodman of the North Carolina Diocese, and also to Alan Story for some of his thoughts in manna and mercy. 
And I invite you to prepare your hearts with me as we offer a word of prayer together. Risen Christ, it is a privilege to celebrate you today with our church family. We give thanks for this journey we have walked with you through this holiest of weeks and this promise of resurrected new life. And even in these moments sometimes where that resurrected life seems to escape us, we thank you that you come to us again every Easter, every Sunday, to remind us of that hope. In these next few moments, we pray that you would help us to be such masters of ourselves that we would truly be your faithful servants to all other people. Take our minds and think through them, our lips and speak through them, and then take all of our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. When Martin Scorsese received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Film Institute in 1997, he shared a story in his acceptance speech that night. Before becoming a filmmaker, Scorsese studied to become a Roman Catholic priest. And after years of making films, he eventually ran into uh, one of his beloved parish priests from his childhood. And eventually, the conversation came around to the topic of his films, which if you have seen them, you know they tend to be pretty dark and death-dealing, don't they, right? And so Scorsese hesitated a moment and asked his dear mentor, well, have you, have you seen any of, my friend, any of my films? And the priest replied, oh, yes. Scorsese said, what'd you think? Long pause. Marty, Marty, Marty. Too much Good Friday, not enough Easter Sunday. <laughs> Too much Good Friday, not enough Easter Sunday. This could be our refrain as well. Too much Good Friday when we look at the world around us. We've been living with pain and death and suffering and loss in this Lenten season. We can name so many different places of heartbreak, Gaza, Ukraine, Port-au-Prince, upcoming elections, divisions in our denomination, suffering in our personal lives. Many of you have lost loved ones or received a devastating diagnosis, cried out for your own suffering or the suffering of a family member. The despair is real. We are longing for signs of hope and searching for meaning and praying for a different future. So how do we celebrate Easter in a world like this? A world with too much Good Friday and not enough Easter Sunday. How do we shout, He is risen, when we don't necessarily feel joyful or like the promise of the gospel is real? I imagine that Mary Magdalene must have felt something like this that very first Easter morning in the garden next to the tomb with the stone rolled away, where she is shocked to find it empty when she came to prepare the body. Preparing the body was such sacred work in those days, a holy practice, and now there was no body to prepare. She's weeping for the loss of her friend and for his stolen body. A man she presumes to be the gardener calls her by name. And as Mr. Matt reminded us, suddenly she recognizes Jesus. Everything changes when he calls her by name. What joy, what relief, what resurrection promise bursts into her life. And her immediate impulse is to want to touch, to reach out, to hold on to him. And the risen Jesus says to Mary, don't try to hold on to me. There's a lesson for us here, too. Resurrection power isn't something that we can hold on to, that we can manufacture, that we can possess. It is a gift that we receive, a gift of love and mercy and forgiveness and grace. It is a gift that we cannot earn. There's nothing we can do in order 
to earn that gift. There's nothing we can do to try to explain it, even though our 21st century scientific minds want to try. Resurrection happens in the mystery of God, in the shadows of a tomb, when all life and hope and promise seem to be dead and gone. Like a flower that emerges from one of the bulbs like we see before us, hope breaks forth on the surface of our lives. The tomb is empty. This alleged gardener turned savior calls us by name, and suddenly we realize God's glorious yes to life and love and hope has defeated our no to truth and love and gentleness. Sin and evil and death have been conquered. God is victorious upon the cross, and the surprise is resurrection. I wonder if any of you have ever played somebody better than you at chess. Yeah? Ever had that happen? Yeah? Chess is one of those games. It's a unique game because sometimes you can claim victory in chess before the very end. Do you know what I'm talking about? Right? You can anticipate your win because you have plotted out all of the next moves. Alan's story says that when he was uh, little, he used to play his older brother who always used to beat him in chess. And his brother would declare to him, oh, you've lost. Even two, three, four moves before the end. You know how defeating that is, right? Oh, you've lost, right? His brother had set up the winning move, but it wasn't the next move in the game. And in the cross of Christ, God has already won over death, even though the game isn't over yet. We have the promise of God's victory fulfilled in our world, love and peace and justice for all. Resurrection is the winning move, but the game continues. And so what is our response to this resurrected new life? this gift that all of us have received. What is our next move? We all have different responses when it comes to that next move. For, for some of us, Jesus' gift of resurrected new life seems doubtful. And so we just take that resurrected new life and we stick it in the back of the closet and we forget about it like an ugly Christmas sweater that Aunt Jane knit for us, right? We just put it in the back and forget about it. Others of us are a little bit embarrassed by this gift of resurrection, kind of like a gift of underwear. And so we hide it. We keep it hidden underneath everything else. What will other people think of us if we believe in the risen Jesus and we follow him? Sensible folks, scientific minds in the 21st century don't believe something like this, and they certainly don't talk about religion and politics. And so we hide the resurrection. We keep it buried deep down. And yet Mary Magdalene models for us something that Miss Manners advised against, and that is re-gifting the gift of resurrected life. Mary receives this gift when she recognizes Jesus, and then she re-gifts it first to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then to everyone else she meets. She tells them about the good news that Jesus is risen. Mary re-gifts resurrected life that she has received from Jesus to all. And if we decide to follow in Mary's footsteps, that we too are going to share this gift of resurrected life that we have all received, then we have to remember that resurrection is not about performance or practice. It's about receiving love and grace from God for each one of us. And then we take it and we recognize that with it comes two re important responsibilities. The first is a willingness to be surprised. <laughs> Even in the worst circumstances, by glimmers of hope, gifts of grace, the sudden recognition that God is with us despite all the odds. And once we recognize this surprise, then the second is a commitment to love God and to love our neighbors too. That is, to live in a way that re-gifts love, 
hope, and peace of Jesus to everyone we meet, especially those who are most overlooked by the church or by our society. This is what it means to be Easter people in a Good Friday world. We re-gift the love and the hope, the joy, the peace, and the justice that Jesus has given us. And one of the things I love about serving in this church is that we are constantly receiving that gift of resurrected new life and then sharing it, re-gifting it to the world. One of my favorite moments this past week happened when we paraded around this church from all different languages and backgrounds and gifts and graces, singing our praises and hosannas to the Lord. Isn't that a beautiful group? Amen? I heard some amens out there, this quiet crowd this morning. This is what it means to be the resurrected people of God, to welcome people from all corners of the globe, to open our church every single day of the week to both 12-step groups and also to Head Start children, despite the fact that one of the children this week, when uh, he saw me, shouted out, Hi, Grandma! Children have a way of keeping you humble, don't they? I was like, geez, the Holy Week has been rough this year. <laughs> we also open our doors every Wednesday to the food pantry, welcoming people who are food insufficient in this community. Uh, tomorrow night, we will open the doors overnight to those who need a place to be to get out of the nasty spring storms. We have become in this past year a reconciling church by an overwhelming percentage, saying that we truly welcome all in this place. We show up at the airport to offer radical hospitality to brand new Americans. We nurture an amazing group of children, and you got to catch a glimpse of some of them this morning. We baptize and we feast at the Holy Communion table together. We feed college students both literally and spiritually. We visit people who are in the hospital or in their homes. We march for the poor people's campaign. This is what it means to be Easter people in a Good Friday world. And it's not an easy journey. It's not a journey that just happens overnight. We're going to face opposition and criticism and a lot of evidence to the contrary. We will encounter Easter's where it doesn't really feel like Easter. But the good news is that Easter is more than a day. It's a season, a season in the church and a season in our lives. And once Mary told those first disciples, I imagine it took them a little bit of time to actually process this good news, to figure out what it was going to mean for their lives. Not just one day, but a season of learning to let the gift of resurrected new life take a hold of them. But take a hold of them, it did. And then, like Mary, those disciples made the next move. They re-gifted the gift of resurrection as they shared the story with others. Boldly, gratefully, faithfully, passionately. And the more they shared that story, the more they became Easter people. May that be our next move as well. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Amen. Thank you. 
And this morning, as we come to prayer concerns of our community life, the special people of the week are Phil Strandling and Lorena Mera, and Pastor Donna will be prepared to give you the details so that you can be able to send them a card or an email or whichever way you want to reach out so that they can know that they are loved and they are special people to us as a community. Like Mary, we approach the empty tomb we see a broken world before us, and we know that collectively we share in those injustices. Loving Savior, have mercy on us as we confess together. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the tomb, you have given us the sure sign of your power to deliver us from sin and death and to renew our whole creation. We confess that we still fall into doubt and fear. We continue to cling to selfish ways and doubt your power to make all things new. Forgive our lack of faith. Have mercy on our weakness. Raise us from the death of sin that we may live with Christ in the joy of his resurrection now and forever. Amen. Children of God, hear these words of assurance. Do not dwell on your wounds any longer, for Jesus has risen to heal us, to forgive us, and to make us whole. He, he has, has risen, risen to make us the his Easter, Easter people. people. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Alleluia. Amen. Risen Christ, indeed this Easter morning feels like a good Friday because there are so many things that are happening in the world that really make it a very dim world. It is difficult to celebrate when you know that others are not celebrating. It is difficult to celebrate when we know that in Gaza they are not celebrating that in Israel they are not celebrating because of loved ones who are still held hostage. In Ukraine there is no celebration and there is little celebration in Russia. And we could go on and on in Africa and many other places in Haiti where the children do not know where to turn. It feels very, very good Friday, a very dim, dim morning for them. But you rose up and you said, where is your sting, O death? And even as we think about that death, we are reminded of members of this community, Mama Tabu, whose niece and baby died in fire in Kentucky. Lord, have mercy. We don't even know what to tell you about it. Yani mungu, tunasema ya kwamba, tunakumbuka ya kwamba wakati huu, ni wakati ambao ni mamajonzi mengi kwa watu wengi. Inasikika kama ni juma jema, haisikiki kama ni pasaka jema. Na tunakuomba sababu ya wale ambao wamefiwa. Tunafikiria kuhusu mama Tabu ambaye yuko kule Kentucky na familia yake sababu wamepoteza mjukuu wake na kitukuu chake. Sababu ya moto tunakuomba ili ukawe pamoja na wao and even us here in this congregation there are so many people who have faced a lot of difficult times these last few months and we've been praying for them deaths sicknesses and various other things 
So it feels really good Friday for them. But you are risen indeed. For you reassure us that neither death nor life nor anything living can be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus. And so we come this day knowing that with heavy hearts but also rejoicing that this is a day that we are going to be with families and enjoying together. We don't know what to say sometimes, but we join in the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to a time of sharing our gifts, I want to give thanks in this holy week for our chancel choir, our musicians, uh, for those who have been here as guest musicians as well, uh, for Chuck Prestonari and James Walton and all that they have put in to create beautiful music. And I want to invite you to join me in giving God thanks and praise for them. It is your gifts that help to create a, be a beautiful and powerful music ministry here at First United Methodist, and we hope that you will continue to give generously. Today we want to know about the gift of your presence here, and there should be some yellow cards in the pew in front of you. Um, please take a moment and fill those out. There's also a QR code on the screen if you prefer to scan that and let us know you were here. Share joys and concerns with us, and we will lift them up um, throughout this next week with help from our staff and our prayer team. Uh, our ushers will be coming forward in just a moment to collect our gifts and those prayer cards. You may also give in a few other ways. If you go to this, uh, another QR code and scan it, it will take you to our Vanco website. You can give on Venmo. Our handle is at F-U-M-C-B. Um, and then you can also send in your gifts or drop them off throughout the week at the church. And I want to invite you to share generously this morning as our musicians again share their incredible gifts with us.
Salvation belongs to our God. Risen Savior, you are indeed worthy to receive all honor and glory and praise. And so this day we render to you some of the gifts that you have so richly given to each one of us. And we pray that you would bless these offerings and then that you would re-gift them as signs of resurrected new life and hope to a Good Friday world. For we ask this all in the name of your love, your spirit of power. Amen. La puissance d'amour de Dieu qui a ressuscité Jésus à une nouvelle vie vous fortifie dans l'espérance, vous enrichisse de son amour et vous remplisse de joie dans la foi. Allez dans la paix de Christ. Alléluia. Amen. Naomba nguvu ya upendo wa Mungu ambao ilimfufua Yesu katika maisha mapya. 
iwatie nguvu katika tumaini iwatajirize kwa upendo wake na kuwajazeni furaha katika imani nendeni kwa amani haleluya amina may the loving power of god which raised jesus to new life strengthen your, you in hope and lead you with his love and fill you with the joy in the faith go in peace hallelujah amen, amen. Thank you.